Pop, you're so annoying. You and Emily are really annoying. I wish you guys would just disappear. Ryan lashed out at me and his own daughter with unbelievable harsh words. Just when I thought I couldn't trust this man anymore, an incident happened. Emily. One day, when I returned home from work, Emily was sitting on the ground in the yard, hugging her knees. Her hands were trembling from the cold. Even with a coat on, her exposed cheeks and the backs of her hands were reddish black. Seeing my face, Emily smiled weakly, relieved. Mom, welcome back. Why are you in the yard? What happened? Where's dad? Emily kept her smile, but resignedly murmured. He went on a trip with Sana. Leaving her behind for a trip was bad enough, but to specifically tell her it was a family vacation was a malicious, indespicable act. What does he think of Emily's existence, of Emily's life? Ryan must be underestimating me, thinking of me as a weak woman with little income. Indeed, he's right. But a mother can become strong at times. A father like this is unnecessary. I am Lisa Johnson. I am a housewife in my 40s. I have two daughters. Emily, who is in the second grade of elementary school. And Sarah, who is three years old. When Sarah started preschool, I began working part-time. Having not worked since Emily's birth, I found myself physically and mentally tired. However, having had little interaction with others before, I was happy to have conversations with adults. Mom, I cooked the frozen meals. What Emily did? Wow, thank you. When I came home 30 minutes after Emily's school ended, she proudly pointed to the microwave. I was touched that she took the initiative to help out, considering how tired I must be from my part-time job. Just the other day, I was still preparing her morning clothes for her. As I moved to hug Emily out of joy, she quickly dodged. Come on, I've told you I don't like hugs. It's a bit lonely, but my daughters are growing up fast. However, I've been troubled by the presence of her rebellious eldest son recently. Yuck, what's this food? Disgusting. My big eldest son, no, actually, he is my husband, Ryan, exaggeratedly complained. The food's too soft. Gross. How can anyone eat this? It's trash. Indeed, today's meal was softer than usual. I had informed Ryan that Emily cooked today's meal while preparing it. Yet, I couldn't understand why he deliberately made a scene. Hey, Ryan, stop it. What? Why are you mad? I'm just telling the truth. It's not my fault. Emily bit her lip and glared at Ryan. Hey, you think it's okay to make that face at your parents? You're really cheeky. Not cute at all. Can't even cook the frozen meals properly. You're finished as a woman. Those words should not be directed at a grade school daughter. Anger boiling inside me, I took a deep breath. Just then, Sarah popped her face between us. Daddy, can't you eat? Sarah will cast a magic spell for you. Saying that, she showed the sprinkles. Stretching herself, she sprinkled them over Ryan's meal. Make it tasty. Make it tasty. See, Dad. You shouldn't be picky. Eat lots and grow big and strong. The tense atmosphere instantly lightened. Ryan's cheeks relaxed, and he potted Sarah's head. Thank you, Sarah. You're so cute. Yeah. Sarah is cute. And so is my big sister. 
What? No, Sarah's cuter. Daddy, I love you. Sarah looked up at Ryan with an innocent smile. She was truly a magician. She easily silenced Ryan. You have been so meanly smirking at trying to belittle Emily. Our family wasn't exactly close, but we were normal, I guess. Ryan didn't show much interest in me or the girls. Even when Sarah had trouble with friends, he was indifferent, saying, um, so, that's not my problem. But he drinks moderately and doesn't gamble. Of course, he's not rough or forceful either. Just, everything about the house and the girls is left to me. Not a bad person. Just lacking fatherly awareness, I suppose. Our relationship started to crumble about six months ago. Ryan came home drunk one day, in an unusually good mood. Hey, your king has returned. He hassled the kids who were about to go to bed. Dad, don't cling to me. Your smell is so alcoholic. Hey, don't say that. I'm a good guy, right? You love me, right? Stop it. Looking back, it was from that day that Emily started avoiding Ryan, calling him stinky, and Ryan began to find Emily not cute and annoying. Even on days when he hadn't drunk, Emily glared at Ryan, calling him stinky. I might not understand because of my chronic sinusitis, but the girls her age are sensitive, I guess. She doesn't speak all of him to his face, so I'm watching over this as part of her growing up. But Ryan is the problem. I've got souvenirs. Coming home from work, Ryan proudly announced, showing us a box of cakes. Even Emily smiled at that moment. But when we opened the box, there were only two cakes. I secretly felt down, thinking they were only for the girls, as I love cake too. Here, Sarah, you have the chocolate cake. You like that, right? Yeah. Love it. And this cheesecake is for... Ryan smirked mischievously. For Daddy. Emily's smile vanished in an instant. She turned her back to Ryan immediately, turning on the TV as if to say how ridiculous. I couldn't help but let out an annoyed huh. Wait a minute. What about Emily's share? That's not nice. It was as if Ryan had anticipated being confronted, smirking in a way that was unsettling. Well, well, well. I bought the cakes with my own money. You've got no right to complain. Here, Sarah, let's eat together. Yeah, let's eat. Emily, Mom, let's share. Innocent Sarah brushed aside any malice. Happily hopping around, she began to prepare plates and forks for all four of us. No, it's just for Daddy and Sarah. Ryan was flustered, but turned back to see Sarah's sparkling smile. He bit his lip hard. Yet, Emily still seemed uncomfortable. So, I ran to the nearby grocery store and bought a bunch of sweets. Let's start the dessert party. Finally, a smile returned to Emily's face. On the contrary, Ryan clicked his tongue and conspicuously ate the cheesecake, Emily's favorite, making chewing noises and strangely showing off. Ryan must have been particularly displeased because he was still complaining the next morning. You're spoiling Emily too much. Buying her cake just because she whines a bit that's only going to make her more arrogant. She's cheeky, so you need to discipline her properly. Discipline is giving cake only to Sarah and not to Emily your idea of discipline. That's just cruel to Emily. And Sarah can't even enjoy her cake comfortably. Think about how both of them feel. 
Ryan can't seem to keep up with Emily's growth. But how does responding to a rebellious daughter with a rebellious attitude help? I wish Ryan would realize he's a parent. You're a father, you know. Ryan slammed his hand on the table. Yo, I'm a father. A kid shouldn't be disrespecting her father. It pisses me off how she's always glaring at me. Raising his voice like some street thug. Ugh, so annoying. Seriously annoying. You and Emily are really annoying. I wish you guys would just disappear. If these were the words of a son in the midst of teenage rebellion, maybe as a mother, I could have handled it. But the reality is, Ryan is Emily's father. Those are not words a father should say to his daughter. Disappear. What are you talking about? Are you sane? Yo, it's over. Talking to you is a waste of time. I have work to do, you know. Unlike you, I'm busy. If you want to talk more, pay me. $30 for 3 minutes should be fine. You're working part-time, you can afford it, right? Ryan couldn't hold back his laughter, spitting out in disdain. Part-time pay is like $8 an hour, right? Well, with that standing, you still complain to me. You're living thanks to me, so it's your role to make my life comfortable. First, Handle that spoiled Emily. Make sure she can't say she's spoiled by knocking her down. Got it? My whole body heated up. I was boiling with anger. I wanted to hurl all sorts of vile words at Ryan, but I couldn't make a sound. Probably, I was just turning red, opening and closing my mouth. Wow, what a weird face. Why did I marry someone as nagging and ugly as you? Oh, right. Because of Emily. So, is my life ruined because of Emily? Everything's Emily's fault, ho. Ryan left for work with a smirk. I suppressed the urge to scream and hit my chest hard. Thankfully, Emily and Sarah were still asleep. I was furious at Ryan, but also angry at myself. I want to protect Emily and Sarah. I squatted down, sobbing silently. How powerless I am. I want to leave Ryan immediately, but I can't. As Ryan said, my part-time pay is less than $10 an hour. Alone, I can't provide a life for my daughters any different from now. Even a father like him is needed. My powerlessness made me feel so frustrated and pathetic, I couldn't stop crying. Mom, good morning. Mom, are you okay, eh? The voices of Emily and Sarah came from behind. I couldn't show my daughters a face wet with tears. I couldn't even respond as I huddled there. After a while, I took a deep breath and wiped away my tears. Then, I was the usual cheerful mom. Sorry, sorry, good morning to you both. I will make breakfast right away, so wait for it, okay? I tried to head to the kitchen with a smile for my daughters, but Emily grabbed my hand tightly. Sarah gripped my other hand. The warmth of their hands conveyed to me. I want to protect them. That resolve became even stronger. However, trying to have a conversation with Ryan afterward was futile. Ryan wouldn't listen. It's Emily's fault for having such an annoying attitude. He stuck to this one point. Indeed, Emily doesn't say it, but she obviously avoids Ryan, so I warned her. But he smells. Even though it's that age, it's not good to show it in her attitude. Even a father can get hurt. I tried to reason with her, but Emily hesitated and mumbled, but... But, Dad smell, it's really bad. Don't you notice, Mom? 
Emily's eyes brimmed with tears. Then she finally shared the feelings she had been holding inside. What? Dad smells sweet to you. I was confused, and Emily nodded emphatically. The relationship between Ryan and Emily remained the same. Ryan dotted only on Sarah and treated Emily roughly. Sarah is really cute. If only Sarah is with me, I'm happy. Ryan would say, I was about to speak out in anger when Emily stopped me. Whatever I said, it would only lead to a meaningless fight. Just Sarah, that's stupid. Emily muttered quietly so only I could hear, and shrugged in exasperation. The incident happened this weekend. I had a rare Saturday part-time job, so I went to work for half a day. What? Part-time on a Saturday? Well, I'll look after Sarah, so you go work without worries. You can earn at least tonight's dinner money, right? I was irritated by Ryan's sarcastic tone, but if it was just Sarah, whom he adored, I thought it would be okay to leave her with him. I didn't want Emily to be mistreated by Ryan when I wasn't there, so I had her go to a friend's house in the morning. Afternoon, around 2 p.m., I hurried home. I was supposed to be back by 1 p.m., but it got delayed. Ryan, did he feed Emily and Sarah lunch? No, they're probably waiting for me. As I rushed to unlock the front door, I felt a slight presence from the yard. Our yard is tiny, just enough for Emily's school project, a pot of cherry tomatoes. It's winter, so no cherry tomatoes can be harvested, and it's not spacious enough for playing, so the girls usually don't go out there. A bad feeling made me peek into the yard quietly. What? There was Emily, sitting on the ground in the yard. I rush over, her hands trembling from the cold as she hugged her knees. Emily, what happened? Even with a coat, her exposed cheeks and the backs of her hands were reddish black. I wrapped her ice gold hands and rubbed them. Seeing my face, Emily smiled weakly, relieved. Mom, welcome back. Sorry to keep you waiting, but why are you in the yard? What happened? Where's dad? Emily kept her smile, but resignedly murmured. He went on a trip with Sarah. I remembered Ryan being unusually cheerful this morning, happy to spend time with just Sarah. I had dropped Emily off at her friend's house and then headed to work. I had also told Ryan that Emily would be back by noon. So, around noon, when Emily came home, it seemed that Ryan and Sarah were just leaving. A trip, a family trip. Telling her explicitly about a family trip was an act full of malice, the worst kind. Moreover, he didn't even leave the house key, leaving Emily out in the cold. What does he think of Emily's existence, of Emily's life? Are you all right? I was too late. Sorry, it was cold, wasn't it? It's okay now. I hugged Emily tightly. Sitting on the damp, cold ground, Emily finally let her tears fall. I no longer want to see Emily's sad smiles or her tears. Then we'll move out, just us, our family. What? Emily's eyes widened. In fact, I had been planning to move for a while. And I decided now was the time to act. But what about Sarah? Mm, Sarah will be okay, I guess. With a little reassurance for Emily, who was slightly anxious, we immediately started preparing to move. While packing for the move, I called Ryan. It took a while to get through, but after redialing about a dozen times, Ryan finally answered the phone. What? 
You're calling too many times. It's scary. Ryan himself should know best why I was calling incessantly. Where did you go leaving Emily behind? Uh, just out with Sarah. She's my kid. Is it bad to take her out? It's fine to go out, but leaving Emily behind is horrible. I tried to stay calm, but I couldn't help raising my voice. I was afraid of Ryan freaking out at such an attitude, but surprisingly, he was nonchalant. I think Emily is old enough to stay home alone, cause she is already in elementary school. You're being overprotective. He seemed to be reveling in their so-called family trip. I could hear, probably, a joyful music of a theme park in the background. You should go home right now and return Sarah to me. No way. Don't talk about her like she's your property. Sarah loves me more than you. Ryan was laughing. The unpleasant laughter made me want to cover my ears but I could faintly hear Sarah's voice. Hey, is that a call from mom? Then the call was cut off. No matter how many times I redialed, I couldn't get through to Ryan again. With no other choice, I left a note on the table saying we were leaving the house and Emily and I left. Ryan called late at night. Where are you? Why aren't you there? Didn't you read the note? Emily and I can't deal with you anymore. That's why we left. Huh. How about our dinner? Even now, all he worried about was dinner. I was speechless with disbelief. Don't mess with me. Your job is to make dinner and clean the house. Get back here now. I'm not coming back. What did you say? What about today's dinner? It's unfair to just leave like this. I stayed silent, and then I heard Sarah whining. Daddy, I'm hungry. Daddy. Hey, Daddy. I'm hungry. Sarah, Mom left on her own, so no dinner tonight. Eth, this is so annoying. Maybe I'll order food delivery. But then, I spent quite a bit on the trip. Uh, what a hassle. While I was concerned for Sarah, I hung up the phone. Ryan can enjoy his time with his beloved Sarah's all he wants. And three days have passed. Ryan has been calling frequently, but I've ignored all his calls. Today, too, the phone hasn't stopped ringing since early morning. The calls end and then start again, showing he's quite desperate. Thinking it was about time, I answered the phone. Hey, I called you so many times. What have you been doing? Come back home right now. I told you, I'm not coming back. Shut up. Come back. Just, somehow, deal with it. I could sense fatigue in Ryan's voice. He hadn't been involved in parenting much. So maybe he was tired from being with Sarah all the time. Pleading from Ryan, I returned home. As I opened the front door, Sarah ran up to me like a dog. She leaped into my arms with force. Mommy, welcome back. Sarah, did you miss me? Not at all. I'm fine. Sarah smiled brightly and cheerfully responded. Following behind, Ryan staggered towards us. Where have you been until now? Under his eyes were bags and he looked resentful. I left a note saying I was leaving. More importantly, where did you take Sarah without telling me? I took her to the amusement park. Before Ryan could finish, Sarah told me. I went to the amusement park with Daddy. Wow, Sarah, that's great. Did you have fun with just Daddy? You know, Ashley Mom was also there. Oh, Ashley Mom. Turning slowly, 
Ryan was looking upwards. Hey, Ryan, who's Ashley's mom? Ryan seemed to be looking for an excuse, avoiding my eyes. Well, that Ashley is just. Before Ryan could finish panicking, Sarah gleefully revealed the truth. Ashley's mom is Sarah's new mommy. Now I have two mommies. Isn't that great? I stroked Sarah's head. You seemed happy. No, that's not right. The only mommy is Lisa, right? Lisa. Ryan swallowed nervously. Making your child call your affair partner mommy is the worst. I spoke in a surprisingly low voice. We have no choice but to divorce because of your affair. Wait, hold on. Let's not talk about divorce. Really, it's not like that with Ashley. It's over. Ryan tried desperately to cling to me. I knew you were having an affair. What? Emily told me. She said she smelled something sweet from you. She avoided you not because of the smell, but because she hated having a father who was having an affair. Ryan frowned upon hearing Emily knew. Yet, he didn't stop making excuses. It was just a bit of fun with Ashley, not some big affair. And it's really over with Ashley. Tell Emily it was a misunderstanding, so, no divorce. Just three days ago, he took Sarah on a fake family trip. And now it's over. Hard to believe. I wanted to say more, but I suppose that's just how it is and I nodded in understanding. Got dumped by your affair partner, huh? Ryan nodded silently. You're a dad with kids. A man who easily breaks his family can't be happy, even if he remarries. I was trying to be nice, but you mumbling too much already. I'm not the bad guy. It's Sarah's fault Ashley dumped me. Ryan pointed sharply at Sarah. What do you mean it's Sarah's fault? You had fun at the amusement park, didn't you? The amusement park, yes. But after you left, I called Ashley over to the house. Your thoughts are gross. I had no choice. It's your fault for leaving on your own. Ashley too, after taking care of Sarah for half a day, she left. That quitta. Ryan was agitated but soon slumped and rounded his shoulders. Anyway, how's Sarah doing? How? She's a sweet girl. Even now, trying to stop our fight, she brings us snacks. Filling my hands in Ryan's pockets to the brim. Yet, Sarah ran off again to fetch more snacks. She was all over the place at the amusement park getting lost numerous times, which was a hassle. But worse than that were her tantrums after we got back from the park. I ordered takeout for dinner, but she cried, not wanting either hamburgers or spaghetti. Sarah doesn't even like a hamburger or spaghetti in the first place. It was such a hassle. I even ordered a pizza additionally, but still, she was fussing loudly. Of course. Sarah likes mac and cheese. She's particular about the product, too. She can eat a pizza, but I always serve a bowl of mac and cheese. What? You're allowing such whims. Sarah is incredibly spoiled. She doesn't sleep well at night, and when she does, she starts crying. When am I supposed to sleep? That's why Ryan had dark circles under his eyes. Usually, Ryan sleeps in a different room for me and the kids. Though he probably heard the noise, he must have thought it didn't concern him. She's crazy, right? Suddenly starts running when we're outside. What's with that? I thought she was just excited at the amusement park, but she just dart off into the road. I tried walking her to preschool, but it was impossible. Ryan was handed more snacks by Sarah. Despite Sarah looking up at him with a smile, 
Ryan didn't return it and just sat down in the hallway, holding his head. I'm so tired. It's your fault for how you raised her. You failed at parenting. You're not fit to be a mother. I crouched down in front of Ryan and peered into his face. I'm not fit to be a mother. You, who knew nothing about Sarah, are the one who's failed as a father. Sarah is already three years old. What have you noticed about her in these three years? Ryan's face turned red. Shut up. I'm working, so taking care of the kids is your responsibility. Don't put this burden on me, just come back. I stared straight into Ryan's face, my eyebrows lowered. Did we fail at parenting? Yeah, a big failure. I guess so, huh? I stood up and looked down at Ryan coldly. For a father to have no interest in his kids and grow up to be a man who cheats, you really messed up in parenting, turning into such a worthless man, Ryan. What? Being mean to a defiant child, abandoning one that doesn't conform to your wishes, and you still call yourself a father. We don't need such a failed father. Overwhelmed by my pressure, Ryan couldn't stand up. Somewhere deep down, I had thought parenting was my job, and I had been hesitant because Ryan was providing for us. But I can't continue to be a family with Ryan after his foolishness has been so blatantly exposed. You want me to come back? No way. I just came to pick up Sarah. Ryan, we don't need you. I'm not your mom. I have no obligation to indulge your whims. What? Are you mad? Always acting so superior, but Ryan immediately loses his momentum when I push back a little. Sorry, cheating was wrong, but I've really ended things with Ashley. Okay, she's the worst, you know. She said she wanted to take cute little Sarah if we got married, but then she bails after half a day. Useless, right? She's over 30 still living with her parents, can't even make a decent meal. In the end, you're the only mother for Sarah. Who was it again who just looked down on me as an unfit mother, trying to smooth things over with such flimsy words right after? Being exposed really shows how unreliable he is. Right, I am the mother of Sarah and Emily, and I'll never abandon them or fail to protect them. So, as a father, I... I cut off Ryan's voice. It's too late. We don't need you. Why don't you go back to your mother and start over? Ryan, whether out of anger or despair, was trembling slightly with his hands on the floor. He breathed roughly, looking down. Daddy, I'll give you some candy. Worried. Sarah piled up candy in front of Ryan. Ryan slightly raised his face and took Sarah's hand. Sarah, you love daddy, right? Yeah, I love you. So, you'd be sad if daddy was gone, right? Hmm, not really. It's okay if you're not here. Ryan's smile twisted. What? You said you love me, right? Yeah, I love you. Daddy is about this much loved. Sarah showed her love by putting her index fingers together closely. I couldn't help but burst out laughing. That's practically zero. Then, Sarah spread her arms wide. And you know, I love mommy this much. Running down the hallway, she yelled, From here to here, that's how much I love mommy. Like, I love mommy more than our house, like the universe. Sarah's love was unstoppable. As Sarah's smile brightened, Ryan's face turned paler. So, that's why we don't need Ryan. Goodbye. Ryan weakly lifted his right hand as if to stop us, 
but seemed to lack the energy to call out. I picked up Sarah and left the house where we had lived with Ryan. Left alone, Ryan reluctantly called back his affair partner, Ashley. Even if she's not good at housework, she's better than Ryan, you can't do anything. With no troublesome children around, there's no reason their love couldn't reignite. I learned about these two from a mom friend living nearby. She was surprised to see an unknown woman coming and going from my house. I thanked her for worrying and carefully explained the situation to avoid misunderstandings. The story quickly spread around the neighborhood and somehow even reached Ryan's company. It's a small world, indeed. About a month after I left the house, when I contacted Ryan by phone, he responded with joy, Lisa, is that you? Long time no see, have you been well, missed me? I've been waiting for your call all this time. Um, even though you were living with your affair partner. What, how did you, no, but I kicked her out. Kicked her out, as if, you were dumped by your affair partner, weren't you? What? It seems Ryan felt uncomfortable at his company after the rumors spread that he was cheated on and abandoned by his wife, and he quickly resigned. He must have assumed finding another job would be easy, given his skills. Don't act so high and mighty when you're unemployed, right? What? How do you know that? Don't act so high and mighty when you're unemployed. That was the last thing Ashley hurled at Ryan. The two had a massive fight, yelling in front of the house, as told by the same mom friend. You ran away from an uncomfortable workplace, but couldn't find another job, right? Hitting the nail on the head, Ryan went silent. And yet, at home, you were lounging around not even bothering to put the dishes in the sink, right? Even the affair partner who loved you couldn't stand keeping such an arrogant, unemployed person around. Uh. Despite me telling you that you're a failure, you couldn't grow from it. Ryan's heart must be completely shattered, hurt by me, the kids, and even the affair partner. The reason I contacted you today isn't because I was worried about you nor because I want to reconcile. I stayed emotionlessly. I already filed a divorce petition. There's no reason to contact Ryan except to sever ties. Ryan, not wanting to be blamed for their, agreed to the divorce. We've settled the alimony and property division through a lawyer. This will ensure that my daughters and I won't struggle for a while. Sorry I'm late. When I get home from work, there's a pleasant smell in the air. Oh, we're having mac and cheese today. Bingo. Grandma and I made it. Amazing. I can't wait to eat. I moved back to my parents' house with my daughters. Though my parents aren't wealthy, and Emily has to change schools due to the new district. Friends can be made anywhere, but you only have one mom. I hesitated to rely on my parents, but Emily encouraged me. Now, with my parents' help, I'm able to work full time. Mom, look. Sarah made the carrots and the salad into star shapes. Isn't Sarah amazing? My parents are indulgent with Sarah's peculiarities and spontaneous actions. Probably because they have more patience for their adorable grandchild. I remember them being stricter with me as a child. Emily and Sarah made mac and cheese is so delicious. There's a secret ingredient. Guess what? Um, love. Emily smirks dismissively. The correct answer was Gouda cheese. Sarah couldn't hold back and revealed the answer. 
This ordinary life feels overwhelmingly happy.